Hey, Derek Shelton, let me put a little bug in your ear, okay? Guess what? No one in Pittsburgh thinks that you're a good manager at all. And if you think us booing you is, you know, a, a big concern, or if you think it's going to continue to for, to go on until you're not the manager anymore, well, I got news for you, buddy. It's going to continue to happen because you suck as a manager. Steel Sermon in the house Sunday afternoon with another video. As always, do me a favor. Like, comment, subscribe, follow on Instagram. Link in the description below. You know, I just find it kind of amusing that Derek Shelton is just completely oblivious to reality about why he's a crappy manager, about why the Pirates are what they are, and just, th this guy just has no idea what he's talking about. And I'm referring to on, I think it was Tuesday's game, Mo Monday's game, I'm sorry, it was Monday's game, I saw an article that a buddy of mine sent me, and it was that Derek Shelton was responding to the boos that he's gotten in, that he got in Pittsburgh on Monday night's game. Well, here's the thing, Derek. When you leave your rookie pitcher Quinn Priester in a 22-year-old in the in for the sixth inning, so he could face the heart of Cleveland's order again, the Duke the kid gets smacked around with RBI doubles from Jose Ramirez, who's always an MVP candidate and Josh Naylor, who's a steady hitter, and Andre Jimenez made it 7 nothing with a solo homer. What do you expect these long-suffering fans in Pittsburgh are going to do? And even more senseless after the Jimenez homer, he let Priester face two more batters. What are you thinking, man? I mean, you, you don't have to be a brain surgeon or anything to know that, hey, this is a rookie pitcher that we anticipate to be in the rotation in the future on the mound, and Cleveland is a solid-hitting team when everything clicks together for them. Maybe I should take the young pitcher out of the game so he doesn't lose any confidence. Nope, I'll just leave him back in. You see, that decision right there is why I get on Derek Shelton, okay? Okay. I don't blame Derek Shelton for players that are underperforming at the plate. I blame Andy Haynes for that. Okay? Brian Reynolds has been disappointing this season. That's not Derek Shelton's fault. Derek Shelton doesn't go to bat. Okay? Key Brian Hayes' injuries, I blame that on Derek Shelton. Okay? Guys like Jack Sawinski who are in a slump, I don't blame that on Shelton. I blame that on Haynes. But what I do blame Derek Shelton with is him not being able to go to the bullpen, the lack of the bullpen effort, the lack of maturity that this rotation has, the unawareness that this team has every single time they take the field, the morale of the team, and the attitude of the team when they get in a deficit. I blame that on Derek Shelton because a team always takes after the personality of their head coach or their manager. And this team does not know how to come back from a rally because Derek Shelton doesn't know how to fight back. And speaking of the boos, this is what this guy had to say in regards to it when he was asked about it. Here's the quote that I have posted on the screen right here. Yeah, yeah, I think you guys have been talking to me for four years. I've never shied away from anything or hid from anything. Well, we know that's a bunch of BS, Derek, because you seem to lay a blanket of excuses with everything, and I do mean everything, for why the Pirates are underperforming and why we slump so often now. So we all know that's a load of BS. We have to be better. Oh, no kidding, Derek! You haven't gotten better. You've been here almost four years, and this team hasn't gotten any better in any sense of the phrase. Stop talking about it and actually do it. You can start getting better by knowing, hey, 
This 22-year-old who's making his rookie debut in the majors is getting rocked by a solid offensive team. Maybe I should take him out of the game. Maybe I should at the very least get the bullpen started. Or maybe I'll just leave him in. Because I know he's going to figure it out. He's going to come up with these situations later on. That's not how a manager operates. You're not getting better. You haven't gotten better in 97 games. What makes us think that you're going to just figure it out with the final 65 games of the season? What? I, I mean, I see right through this. This guy thinks that we're idiots or something or that we don't watch the games. Anyway, he says, and we have to work to continue to be better. So he just said the same thing twice in just a different way. So the fact that the fans are passionate and frustrated, I get that. There's nobody more frustrated than I am. No, you're not, Derek. You're not frustrated at all. You just take it and take it and take it and take it, and you expect the same results with the same scheme every single game. And if that's a little too theoretical for you, Derek, let me put it to your perspective in real life. Most of you guys, if you follow me personally on Instagram and my Steel Sermon Instagram, you guys would know that I'm an avid gym goer, okay? I work out a lot. But at the beginning of June, I hit a plateau with my weight loss because I'm trying to get down to a certain percent of body fat to start bulking up, okay? And I hit a plateau. Plateaus are hard to break out of. They are. So what did I do? Did I keep doing the same reps at the gym every day? Did I keep lifting the same weights at the gym every day? Did I keep eating the same foods every day and just hope that I magically break out of the plateau? No. You know what I did? I contacted my buddy who's a personal trainer and a nutritionist, by the way. He put me on a new diet, told me to increase the reps and the sets and the weights that I do at the gym, and wouldn't you know, ever since I started taking his advice, I've lost six pounds. I did something different, and I'm seeing different results every week. Imagine if you're considering going back to college for your master's, and you're flunking a course. What are you going to do? You're just going to do the same study habits over and over again and just ex and just think that, well, I'll still pass. I don't need to pass this course. My study habits are fine. Or are you going to approach your professor, say, hey, I'm not doing too well in this course. I need some help. Recommend a tutor maybe. Talk to some of your classmates and start a study group to get your together so you can pass and get your degree. That's what it is. The repetition, that is on Derek Shelton. And you're damn right we're frustrated, pal. Frustrated is actually putting it lightly. Okay? Because if you think that a couple of fans in Pittsburgh booing you over a piss-poor managerial decision is one thing, I can promise you, it ain't gonna stop. Because there is one more fan one more fan that's going to be booing you. And you're looking at him right here. Because when I go to PNC Park on August 27th, when the Pirates play the Cubs, and I'll be sitting on the Roberto Clemente wall in right field for the first time ever, when they get done announcing all the lineups, and when they say, and now your manager for the Pittsburgh Pirates, Derek Shelton, you can bank on it. I can promise you. When they announce your name at PNC Park, when I'm there, I will be booing you. And I'll do you even better. I will upload a video of me booing you on my Instagram, possibly YouTube as well. I can promise you, I will be booing you too. I mean, geez, man. You managed to fool me at the beginning of the season with the 20-8 and eight record. I mean, geez, if Derek Shelton can fool me, he can fool anybody. I mean, I know that he can fool Bob Nutting. Bob Nutting's a million years old. You know, Ben Sherrington, the guy's old enough to be my father. You guys all know how old I am. I'm old enough to be a father myself. But Derek Shelton is just completely oblivious to how this team is. I'm the most accountable person here. 
We need to be better. We're just not good enough. No kidding! You have the worst record in the NL since the beginning of May. And you're not doing a damn thing. It's like, hey, we got a catcher problem with Austin Hedges. You know, let's, let's keep him in the lineup because I just know he'll figure it out sometime. Austin Hedges is batting 130. And you still keep him in the lineup when you f called up Andy Rodriguez and Henry Davis, who are both catchers, by the way, and you're not platooning them? That's why I get on Derek Shelton. That's why I do it too, okay? And the fact that this guy gets extended just because of a hot start that we had is completely unwarranted and it doesn't change my mind about him. That's what I was afraid most of with this team. That they would get way ahead of themselves and that they would think, yeah, you know, we're finally seeing some progress. Derek Shelton's the guy moving forward. No, he ain't. What do you have to say now? We're last place in the division. From first to worst. And not even a full calendar year this time. In a matter of months. I, I mean, all this guy does is, is just talk, 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 and say, we got to get better. I got to be held accountable for stuff. You know, I, I need to do this. I need to do that. We never see it on the field. We never see changes. We never see something different. And that's on Derek Shelton. And regardless of what, of what you guys think about my channel or what you think about my opinions of the Pirates or not, if I'm too tough on them, if I'm too vocal about them, if I'm this about them, that's fine. You're entitled to your opinion of me. But I'm going to tell you guys something right here, right now. I, with every fiber of my being, love this baseball team. I've been a diehard fan 22 years, and I'm frustrated. I'm pissed off. I'm mad, I'm sad, I'm irritated that this team continues to take the field every single year and they don't do anything right. They never make any progress at all. If I didn't care about the Pirates, stuff like this would not upset me. I would not get this upset about it. I would not come on here and make videos about it. I would not be frustrated. I would not be mad. I would not be as opinionated as I am if I didn't care about the Pirates at all. I'm tired of this team being a speed bump for every other team in the league. I'm, so, I'm tired of watching every team, let alone in our division, get better while we're still at the bottom of the barrel and still the laughing stock of the NL Central. I mean, sure, the Reds, Cubs, and Brewers, they, they may all go through lows, but you know what? They all get better. Where are we? Bottom of the barrel, no progress being made, nobody respects us. Every time teams look at us on the schedule, they say, oh, we play the Pirates. That's an e Those are three easy wins right there. They don't think, oh my gosh, we got to play the Pirates. That's going to be a tough series. We got to give it their all. They laugh at us. How much longer do we have to suffer? How much longer do we have to wait? How long is it going to be until we're a formidable opponent again? How much longer? I can tell you at least three more years as long as this clown is the manager. I can say that right now. Because let me tell you something about Bob Nutting, okay? Love him or hate him, Bob Nutting has proven that he can put together a winning product when he has the right personnel. Derek Shelton and Andy Haynes and Oscar Marine even are not the right personnel for this guy. And if you think that just getting rid of one of those guys is going to make this team even better. I got some tough news for you. Those are just the first dominoes to fall in this team getting better. Andy Haynes and Oscar Marine are just the first two domino pieces that need to fall. Then it's Derek Shelton. And then Ben Charrington, regardless if this rebuild works or not, needs to just leave it to someone else and let a guy who knows what he's doing 
take over this team. And Nutting needs to sell. That's all there is to it. But that's a pipe dream at this point. We're never going to see that happen. I've seen 22 years of this. 22 long years of this. And when I see the manager sitting back there just pretty much, you know, giving cop-out answers for why he's being booed. I mean, where's your fire, dude? Why can't you just come out there and say, why can't you just come out there and say, oh, the fans booing me, it bothers me, and I'm going to do my absolute hardest to make sure that they love me. Why can't you just say that? Why can't you just hold the team accountable? Why do you have to say the same thing over and over again? You're not answering the question. You're just being a puppet that just sits back there and acts like the manager. Because I know damn well, if I was the manager and if I was getting booed, I would take a hard look at myself in the mirror and be like, am I really qualified to be a manager at a major league level when the fans are booing me and my team continues to lose and I'm not doing anything right? That's what I would do. But no, this guy rolls with every cliche in the book about, I need to get better, I need to be held accountable, I need to do this, I get the fans are frustrated. We have every right to be frustrated. And you're the reason for it. That's what I can't stand about this team. The manager. And that he refuses to see what the glaring issue is. That's You're absolutely right, Derek. Changes do need to be made with the Pirates, and it starts with getting rid of you. That's all I got to say for this video. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Still Sermon, checking on out for the day. Have a good one.